Listen to me, this is not clickbait. I didn't have my big break. I didn't lose weight or gain weight. Like nothing changed other than the things that I'm about to walk through that you, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, you can implement right here and right now. I have a whole list of things that I did to feel better overnight, but this is not gonna happen by just shutting your eyes and going to sleep and just wanting to feel better. It's going to happen by actually doing the work. What's up baddies? I am Rima and this is the Arab and Thriving Show. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what you need to implement to feel more confident starting tomorrow. Get your notes, get your coffee, get whatever you need to get comfortable let's get right into it confidence is just a thing i mean it just colors the world better it makes you feel better about life. start shallow and then go deep i would be remiss to not talk about how how you look does impact the way that you feel i'm not going to talk through your whole 10 step skincare makeup routine i'm not going to tell you how you need to look it's more so about the way that you look and how that impacts the way that you feel and for every single person that is different you do need to pay attention to your look the first thing I want you to do is go through your closet or your wardrobe and just set aside the things that do not make you feel good. I know we all have that pair of pants or that top that just doesn't feel flattering on us whatever that even means for you and your body type but you just don't feel your best when you're wearing it one thing for me that i had to purge were the huge sweatpants that i wear there is a time every here and there where i let myself wear them around the house because it's just let's just be honest like it's comfortable but on days where i really feel like i need that boost of confidence maybe i have a meeting maybe i'm doing something really important that day i am not gonna let myself wear something that doesn't put me in that posture and in that feeling and so yes even at home, even as someone who works and creates from home, I will take that extra 10 minutes to find an outfit that makes me feel my best. I also sacrifice the most comfortable outfit for something that's going to make me feel better. That does not mean I'm wearing heels in the house or even out of the house for that matter. I'm not telling you to be uncomfortable. I'm just telling you between the most comfortable option and an option that's still comfortable but makes you feel better, I would opt for the second choice. This doesn't require that you go out and buy anything. You don't need to go, you know, on a shopping spree and spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a new wardrobe. If you are someone who does feel like a new wardrobe could help and has the extra disposable income to spend on that, what I would do is create a Pinterest board of the look that you want and be very, very, very intentional about the items that you go and purchase. My friend, talk to me about this and I guess it's called a capsule wardrobe. I guess all the girlies know that, but I did go and invest in a capsule wardrobe that is just making it faster for me to pick out what I'm wearing. I'm all about efficiency. So the fact that I don't have to do this whole intricate process to find something in my closet that makes me feel the way I wanna feel is a plus. And the fact that I can mix and match all of those things is amazing. It did cost me a significant amount of money, but honestly, it just paid off in dividends every single day in the way that I was feeling. Now, aside from just the things that you wear every day, it's also important to feel good about the way that you look. Whether you are someone like me who works from home and is on Zoom all day, so your face is like literally in focus, or sometimes we just wanna feel good for ourselves even if we're not going out and seeing anyone else. I would spend the extra time to just create your signature look. So this look that I have on today is like my signature look when I wanna try. Okay, like I'm actually getting on a YouTube video, like I'm trying. So it took me a little over an hour to get my makeup and my hair done the way that I wanted to. But on days where I don't have that time, I still have a signature five minute look. There are still like maybe two products that I'll put on my face just to make me feel most fresh and awake. Aside from just looking a certain way, we've all had our face for X amount of years. We know it better than anyone else knows it. And it's just important to feel comfortable in that. It's important to find a look that makes Makes you feel your best whether that includes makeup or just a skincare routine or just you know taking your time getting ready parting your hair a certain way whatever it is find your signature look i would recommend a five minute option and a one hour option for the days that you do have that time but find the look that makes you feel your best and carve out the time every day to make yourself look like that to make yourself reflect externally the way that you feel or want to feel internally it sounds shallow and maybe it is but chances are a lot of us who are struggling with confidence it's not that your confidence always comes from how you look because i do think there's something deeper always but how you look can help 
you step into the way that you want to feel and just don't sleep on that no matter what anyone else tells you the last thing i want to say about looks if you do nothing else right now nothing else if you do nothing else for your body today drink water and and adjust your posture just like make it like a thing make it like a trigger every time someone says a certain word ask yourself did i am i drinking water right now is my posture good anytime someone coughs like create funny triggers throughout the day that happen consistently so that you can remind yourself to pull your shoulders back and drink water on days where i'm really not feeling myself on days where maybe i'm traveling and my circumstances are all kind of up in the air and i can't control the things that i just talked about i make sure to drink water and to fix my posture and those two things are kind of like the quickest band-aid for a confidence boost of anything else on days where i'm not doing those two things where i'm just kind of being lazy or not even getting my water in it really makes me feel like the exact person that i don't want to be and I just want to stress that to you. Like, if you're looking for a quick fix right now, that one will literally work wonders and I can't wait to hear how it goes when you try it. Now let's talk about your space. So my space, when we're back home in LA, we're not in LA right now, is so bright and so organized and so clean. And my mom used to literally tell me growing up that my space, my room was a reflection of what was going on in my head. And I used to hate when she said that because my room was always crazy when I was young. So I'm talking to you as someone who didn't grow up being neat. My mom always kind of was on me to clean my room. It was like the thing we always were arguing about, but really later in life started developing the habits to be a lot more organized my makeup is all in this nice little organizer when i pack my clothes are in packing cubes my space is just organized and i know where everything is and i know how to find it i'm never confused about what is where that mental clarity has just made me so much more confident throughout the day it just makes me feel like i have my together for lack of a better word like it really makes me feel like i'm thriving and as much as that does not seem like it would be linked to your confidence the way that you respect your stuff is a direct reflection of the respect that you have for yourself and it was hard for me to hear that too because i'm still working on it but i want to respect my things because i want to feel like somebody who is respectful of everything the things around me the space around me my own body so it really just comes down to that respect when you wake up i know this is cliche but do you do your bed it is disrespectful to yourself to just wake up and like not take care of your space not be intentional not be not slow down you deserve to slow down and make your bed you deserve to slow down and wash your face and brush your teeth you deserve to slow down and fill yourself a glass of water and drink it so just understand that your space really 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 and i can't believe my adult self is saying this because my younger self would be cringing right now your space is truly a reflection of how you feel about yourself the most important and if you do all of these and don't focus on this one nothing is going to work and i know this is an overnight task you can do everything that i just said overnight this is the most impactful important one and it is about your mind and what you are consuming as well as what you are reflecting back to yourself, the way that you talk to yourself. If you are someone who struggles with confidence, how do you talk to yourself? Whether it's out loud or internally, our brains are always working. We are always like this narrator of our life. How are you narrating things? When you drop something, are you kind of like, there she goes again with her clumsy ass? Or are you someone that's like, oop, no problem, let me pick it up. Think about the way that you are talking to yourself throughout the day. When you look in the mirror, what is your mind saying? If you are someone who jokes in a self-deprecating way, if you are someone who jokes about themselves a lot, whether internally or even worse, around people, stop doing that. Like, just stop. It's not funny. It's not funny. Now, if you are someone who doesn't struggle with confidence, then whatever. If you want to be self-deprecating, that's fine. If you are someone who's struggling with confidence, you are literally bullying yourself. You don't love yourself. So why would you pile on to yourself? Why would you allow your internal narrator to pile on and basically bully you? You already know because you struggle with self-love and confidence that it's not coming from a loving place. So when I joke with my sister, it's coming from a very loving place and I know that otherwise I won't crack a joke. If I'm about to say something that's coming from a mean place, I'm not going to say it because I love her. But if I was talking to someone that I didn't love and I said something mean, then yeah, it would be bullying. So why are you allowing your internal narrator to say mean things 
to yourself when you've already established that it's not a loving interaction between your internal narrator and yourself. Stop. It's not funny. It's not a joke. It's very serious. And it's arguably the one thing that is eating away at your self-confidence more than anything else. If there's one change that you can make overnight, it's paying attention and monitoring that voice. Don't judge whatever's happening because that's just piling on even more. But just observe it and change it in the moment. I will think things like, you're such a lazy ass. Why wouldn't you do that? Or why would you do that? And then I'll correct it in the moment. I want my rest right now. And I just didn't go to the gym today. This is going to require the majority of your energy here. You can clean out your space. You can, you know, invest in a signature look that makes you feel good. But if what's happening in your brain is not being audited and corrected in real time, you're just going to be recreating the same patterns. And then slowly but surely, your environment and the way that you look is going to reflect what's happening in your head. So it needs to be this self-fulfilling recurring cycle of... I think good things, I take care of myself, I take care of my stuff, I think good things because all these good things are happening. Right now it might look something like, I think terrible things about myself, so I don't respect my body or myself physically, and so that makes me disrespect everything else around me because I already feel this way about myself, which then fuels the terrible things that I think about myself, and it just becomes this ongoing cycle, so you need to disrupt the cycle, and the most efficient, quick, overnight way to disrupt the cycle is by telling yourself positive things even and especially, especially if you don't believe them. If you do not believe them, say them. It's gonna sound cringy, it's gonna feel cringy, trust me, I know, but just trust me. Say it and force yourself to somehow feel it. This is the only time where I feel like gaslighting yourself is fine. Just say it out loud and feel it. Tell yourself, I am a healthy person. I'm a beautiful person. I am the most confident woman in this room right now even if you're by yourself in the room when you're saying it, but just say things and feel it and watch how your environment around you is just going to match that energy. Like it sounds woo woo, but it's not. It will match that energy because you are putting it out there and making yourself feel it and step into that posture. Two things to keep in mind here as you are auditing and editing your thoughts. Pay attention to who you listen to, and that's good and bad, right? So I want you to be more intentional about who you listen to. If you have caretakers, parents, friends who are negative, do your best to create a shield around you and not allow those thoughts or energies to infiltrate, even if they're not talking about you. They could be talking about something else, but that negativity is going to sit with you. So do your best when you're around them to just create this little shield, make it a fun game. Like imagine the things that they're saying just bounce off of you and go somewhere else. Like you do not want it inside of you. And then especially if they're talking about you, you don't have to listen to them just because they love you. Just because they love you or raised you or grew up with you doesn't mean they know you. They, they don't know you better than you know yourself. And more importantly, they don't know who you want to become. They know maybe who you've shown them and you're not trying to be that anymore. So you should not be taking their feedback as valuable data. You don't need to be internalizing it. You don't need to be letting it infiltrate and sink in so create this energy force around the things that are not serving you i remember i had a friend and i jokingly said that she was moody she's a gemini so there's this whole like stereotype around gemini's being hot and cold and moody and i cracked this joke like you're so moody and she literally was like i'm not moody and like in my mind i'm like you're kind of moody but i respected her being like don't tell me who i am don't tell me who I am. I'm going to tell you who I am. This is not something I want to internalize. And honestly, I let it go because I'm like, my opinion doesn't matter more than her opinion about herself. My opinion especially doesn't matter more about who she's trying to become. I think it's a really important skill to have to just deflect when things are not serving you. Be intentional about positive influences in your life. Now, if you don't have these right now in your circle, that makes sense because you are attracting the energy that you have currently. And if the energy that you have currently is less confident, it's going to be hard to have friends around you right now who challenge you to be better. You've already attracted your circle based off of how you are feeling about yourself. That's why YouTube is great. That's why I'm happy we're here. I've grown so much by binging women who are just so confident and such baddies and just such forces, you know, powerful forces. And one of them is The Wizard Liz. I love watching her stuff because I just feel like in another life we were best friends and I love, love the tough loveness of her content. Another person is Delara, aka The Legal Baddie on TikTok. She's just such an interesting mix of being this hot girl baddie, being this intellect, 
and just, I don't know, just being awesome, being a multi-talented, genuine, down-to-earth, sweet person. I'm giving you resources because truly, like, these are the women that I consume and I feel like they're my digital besties. Like, I'm learning from them and while I might not have people in my space right now who I feel that way about all the time, I can look to those kinds of content creators and just allow my brain to be filled with beliefs that I want to have versus the beliefs that are readily available around me. Another person, and I would be remiss to not mention my girl, Erin On Demand. I actually literally manifested a friendship with this girl because I started watching her content when I wanted to start my YouTube channel. And then slowly but surely we connected both through business, I actually work for her now, and offline as friends. And it's just this like crazy story that maybe I'll tell one day of how me wanting to carefully curate the media and opinions and energies that I allowed into my space actually literally manifested in a new friendship of mine. So I'm here to tell you that if you're someone who feels like you don't have the right people in your space, find the right people, subscribe to their channels, subscribe to their podcasts, subscribe to their blog, whatever it is, and start literally replacing the stuff that is firing in your brain right now with new ideas, new energies, new levels of inspiration, because chances are right now you are attracting through your friend group, through the content that you're consuming, the algorithm knows you really well right now and is sending you things that are probably not making you feel good. Just because someone's an awesome boss influencer doesn't mean that they're making you feel good. You might actually be feeling jealous or envious or just worse about your life situation when you're consuming them. So just always go back to how you feel these women that i just mentioned you might watch them and feel worse about yourself so if that's what's happening just be real with yourself don't judge yourself but the idea is to consume media read books that nurture you and start making you feel like the person that you want to be if you need book recommendations i got you maybe i'll make a whole nother video about some of the books that i've read that have made me feel like that to recap everything that we've talked about the three things i want you to focus on today you have so much work to do so as soon as this video is done just go get to work is your look invest in a signature look go look in your closet right now you don't need to spend any money on this and create a signature look and start weeding out the stuff that does not make you feel good stop wearing them i don't care how comfortable they are i don't care if your grandma gave it to you i don't care how long they've been in your closet stop wearing things that don't make you feel good number two is Focus on your space. While you're in your closet, get some organization going. While you're already picking out this signature look, start to rearrange things and make them feel good for you. Start to rearrange your common areas so that it's clear and you can think clearly. In your bathroom, are you able to get to everything that you need very quickly and in a way that makes you feel like you have your life together? Last, but of course, of course not least, audit and edit the things that you are consuming, the conversations you are a part of, the people that you are subscribed to on social media or even in life, these social circles that you hang around, and most importantly, the thoughts that you're letting yourself get away with. I'm just so, so, so excited for you to step into your best self. I can't wait to watch this glow up. Please comment below and let me know which of these you are most excited to try today. I love you so much and I will see you on the next one.